Good morning. Welcome to another episode of MPT Outdoors. I'm your host, Glenn. And on this beautiful spring morning, I thought I would show you some of the techniques that I've used to keep myself warm in my hammock at night. Now, this isn't just about you know sleeping bags and, and quilts. I'm going to skip that and just go with the whole under quilt, under pad, preventing loss of heat due to convection. So I've tried a lot of different techniques. Some have worked incredibly well. That's the one I'll end with. I'm betting if you've seen these other videos that I've done, you know what that is. But there's also a lot of other stuff that I've experimented with, played with, tried out. Some has worked good, not so good. Some has been a complete failure. I'm going to go through some of those. And if you've got ideas about how you keep yourself warm, other than the traditional under quilt that you can buy or make, I'd like to hear about them. I'd like to hear how you have experimented, tried different things, and seen what's worked for you. All right? So... Hang on a second, I'm going to get this camera turned around, bring you into the first thing that I've got here, and we'll go through each one at, one at a time, okay? Hang on. So what we have here is an emergency uh, reflective tarp with a wool blanket. Yeah, it's a little bit of a rig system there with my twig Merlin spike to hold the shock cord in place. It goes across my... Um, spreader bars. Now, the one thing to note, of course, is that I use spreader bars. Um, the traditional way of doing a hammock, I find a little bit kind of restrictive, and sometimes, you know, the, the side of the uh, hammock kind of presses against my um, stump when I'm sleeping, and that kind of is uncomfortable. So with spreader bars, I don't have that problem. Also, it makes it lying on the diagonal a lot easier. Now, this looks pretty good. I've got this nice big reflective tarp there. Keep the wind from touching me, this nice wool blanket, and then my hammock there, it looks pretty snug and cozy, doesn't it? The problem is the gap. Now, for under quilts, this is a really big issue, is that gap, because that's basically just letting air flow through. Now, I've tried different ways of cinching it up, none have been that successful. Um, so I end up with air gaps, I end up getting cold. So. While this looks pretty good, it doesn't necessarily work that well. Let's have a look at another one. Just thought I'd show you what this would look like in a standard non-spreader bar kind of configuration. Shock cord, carabiner, ridge line, and the hammock sits inside. And again, it would keep you cozy and warm on the sides, but unless you have it cinched up at the ends, you're still going to get that air draft blowing through, which is going to be very, very chilly when it gets down really low in the temperatures. All right, let's have a look at something else here. Now, what we have here is the more traditional kind of underquilt style. I don't have my spreader bars in, and it's rigged kind of like a normal hammock with this underquilt underneath. Now this is a sleeping bag that I made into an underquilt. And I also included cinching at the end here to get it nice and snug so that I don't have that air gap going in there. I can cinch that up a little bit more. To rig this up, normally you'd use shock cord. I've got uh, bungee cords in this case right now just for demonstration purposes but yeah normally you would use a nice shock cord lighter and easier to work with now this technique I've also used and it did not quite keep me warm I couldn't seem to get the balance correct between how far the under quilt was away from my hammock to provide loft to keep me insulated and my body pressing against it and I always ended up with cold spots under my hip or shoulders or my knees or something so this for some works just fine for me it has not worked um, and of course if I've got my uh, spreader bars in there and I'll show you those next it doesn't work very well at all hang on a second I'll show you what that looks like all right so here we are with the spreader bars in place and as you can see the end of quilt creates this little gap in there that I would lay into and again while it does work I kind of lose the benefit of the spreader bars and I've still had the problem where the weight of my body, I can't get it balanced right between pressure and not too much pressure and not enough pressure or a gap between the hammock that I'm laying on 
and the under quilt underneath. Um, for some, this is perfect, but for me, I just can't seem to get it right. So this is what it looks like if I put the spreader bars across and expand out the under quilt. Again, it looks pretty darn cozy in there, doesn't it? And that looks kind of like it'd be comfortable and nice and soft and warm. But when I lay down in here, the pressure of my body squishes this under quilt so much that I lose the benefit of the under quilt. And uh, I end up getting cold spots everywhere. All right, so moving away from the under quilt idea and going with the uh, technique of putting things inside the hammock, one of the things I've tried was the reflective emergency tarp inside the hammock with my spreader bars holding it apart and then shock cord, in this case bungee cord, because that's what I had laying around right now, going up there to hold it in place. And this has worked fairly well. That reflective blanket will actually keep a lot of the heat inside of the, uh, inside you, and uh, the material will prevent the convection from pulling the heat away from you. However, this stuff is crinkly and noisy, and it has a tendency to kind of bunch up in different areas and kind of become a little bit uncomfortable. So while it has had some good success, the noise factor of it has been a little bit uh, distracting and, and, well, annoying. So I've not really used this very often. All right, moving down to probably the most basic, simplistic way of keeping convection from rubbing your body heat, the ultralight short little four foot pad. Not much to say about this. It's pretty obvious how this is used and where it goes and what to do with it. I've used this in the summertime, like when it's really hot here in uh, Washington, like say in uh, July, August time, and with a light sleeping bag. This has worked pretty darn well. This has done just enough that I need to keep the convection from pulling away my body heat and kept, me, uh, kept my upper body nice and warm. So this I've used on several occasions and I'm quite happy with it, um, but it's only for those times when the temperature at night doesn't get below maybe 50 degrees. That's Fahrenheit for those of you not in the United States. Now this beat up old thing that looks like a sun visor is a sun visor. Many people use these as well. They're very affordable. You can get them almost anywhere. The reflective material, the mylar, the bubble um, kind of wrap effect in there does a really good job of keeping your body insulated and uh, protecting you from the convection effect. My son used this particular one for, what, two years before he decided it was too beat up? Even then it was still working. He just didn't like the way it looked anymore. But these are very popular for some people for doing that kind of the ultralight. They'll keep you warm down to maybe 45, maybe 40 if you're kind of a warm sleeper. Um, and I've used this as well, and I can attest to the fact that it does really work. Cheap, affordable, very light. Another option I've used, and uh, this has worked out well. My son likes this one as well. Um, just a traditional... Thermarest kind of pad that you can put inside your hammock. Longer than the ultralight thing. This is about um, five feet long. And this, is, this does a really good job as well. The only thing I don't like is that if you're trying to use this sometimes like in the um, later part of the year or the early part before it really gets warm, you'll notice the sides don't have anything and your shoulders can get cold. And you roll over and you can get a cold effect on your shoulders. And I've not liked that. Um, which is why we're going to move to my next uh, pad, which I prefer almost over everything else. So, but these these work really well, and especially if in the summertime, if you want to use something like this, um, I've been very happy with it. And it's light; they're also very affordable. Perhaps not as affordable as the uh, um, reflective uh, things you can get for your windscreen or windshield, depending on which country you're in. You call it one thing or the other. But um, these are effective, these work. So this is my personal favorite, the Reflectix material with uh, some wings taped on the sides there for my head and my shoulders area. 
that keeps the, uh, the insulation worked around my shoulders so that when I roll over or move, I don't get that uh, convection pulling the heat away from me. This again is a very affordable option, easy to set up. A roll of 10 feet, um, two feet wide is like 20 bucks at a hardware store. Plenty of material to work with. I've used this down to 19 degrees, 18 degrees or so Fahrenheit. Like this was just used in the last igloo outing that I went on. And then my down sleeping bag over that. My underside was toasty warm. I mean, literally toasty warm. Uh, my, my upper side, with the down sleeping bag over me and then a wool blanket um, and then my jacket over that, I was able to stay warm. That was a lot of material to keep me warm. The underside with this kept very warm. Uh, this is very popular with a lot of people as well because of its affordability and its effectiveness. But some people say that you know, these kind of pads are really not to be used, they're no good, it's better off getting an underquilt. It really depends on you. Whatever makes you comfortable and warm and happy, that's what you should use. Well, I hope you found this useful, uh, informative. I've tried a lot of different techniques uh, over the past few years to keep myself warm when I'm in my hammock. The Reflectix pad that I showed last, that's been the most effective for me. Um, these other techniques that I've shown, they've had their pluses, they've had their minuses, they've had their restrictions, they've had the things they do well, the things they don't do well. Um, but for me, the Reflectix pad has been a winner four seasons every time. Um, it's very, very light, it's easy to put together, and it's very, very affordable. So that's what I prefer. You may have your own techniques. You may have come up with a technique that no one has heard of, or maybe you've got a modification that no one has seen before. I'd like to hear about it, and I'm betting others would too. If you've got an idea or some other kind of technique that you've used, mention in the comments section. If you've got a video for it, put that in the comments section as well, okay? Because we should share this information, and that's what this is all about, okay? All right, so if you like this, give me a thumbs up. As I said, put some comments or some suggestions in there. Hit that subscribe button. It's gonna be one of these corners over here somewhere. And as always, I hope to see you out on the trail, staying warm and dry in a hammock. Bye now.